This isn't how a refrigerator is supposed to feel. It's quiet, too quiet. No hum, no buzz, no vibrations. And yet everything inside is cold. Cold. What's missing is the very thing we thought was essential. Gas. Instead, there's just metal. And magnets. Somewhere between the hum of old compressors and the promise of solid-state magic, researchers have unlocked something strange and powerful. A new kind of cooling. One that doesn't hiss or leak. It just works. Silently. Elegantly. And magnetically. Could magnets replace refrigerants? Could your next fridge be solid inside and out? Let's find out. Why cooling needs a rethink. The way we cool things hasn't changed much in over a century. Your fridge, your air conditioner, that industrial freezer down the street, they all rely on the same basic cycle. Compress a gas, move it around, let it absorb heat, and then release that heat somewhere else. It's clever, reliable, and deeply flawed. That's because the gases we've used, especially hydrofluorocarbons, don't just cool your food. They warm the planet. Leaks are common. Repairs are costly. And when these gases escape into the atmosphere, they trap heat thousands of times more effectively than carbon dioxide. We've built a world that relies on cold, but the way we create it is heating things. And while efficiency tweaks have helped, they don't change the fundamentals. What if we could get rid of those gases entirely? What if cold didn't have to come from compression at all? The answer may lie in the solids, materials that don't boil or evaporate, but shift their inner energy when exposed to the right kind of force. One of those forces? Magnetism. Caloric cooling. A new frontier. Imagine cooling something down without using any gas at all. No pressure changes, no chemical leaks, just solid materials reacting to forces like stress, electricity, or magnetic fields. That's the core idea behind caloric cooling. It's not one technology, but a whole family of alternatives, each using a different trigger to shift how heat flows. In elastocalorics, you apply stress to a material, stretch it, or compress it, and that stress changes its internal structure, causing it to release or absorb heat. In electrocalorics, you use an electric field to do something similar. And in magnetocalorics, which we're diving into now, it's all about magnets. What unites these systems isn't the method, it's the result. When these materials are pushed, pulled, charged, or magnetized, they undergo a kind of internal phase transition. The atoms shift position, energy moves, heat flows, and just like that, you get cooling. Unlike vapor compression systems, there's no need to circulate a gas. There's no compressor, no evaporator, no greenhouse gas emissions. Just solid-state devices doing what was once thought impossible. Cooling by design, not by default. It sounds futuristic, but it's already being built and tested. And among all these approaches, magnetocalorics might be the one pulling ahead. How magnetocalorics work. At first glance, the idea seems odd. How could a magnet cool something down? We usually think of magnets as tools for sticking things to metal, not controlling temperature. But certain materials behave differently when placed inside a magnetic field. Their atomic structure shifts, and that shift changes how they handle heat. Take gadolinium, for example. It's a metal that, when exposed to a magnetic field, heats up. Remove the field and it cools down. This reversible temperature change is called the magnetocaloric effect. It's not magic, it's physics. When the magnetic field aligns the microscopic spins inside the material, it becomes more ordered and releases heat. Remove the field, the spins go back to a disordered state, and the material absorbs heat. This process can be harnessed to transfer heat, just like a traditional refrigerant cycle. But instead of compressing a gas, we're simply flipping the magnetic field on and off, or moving it in and out of position. The trick is to do this in a controlled cycle. A rotating array of magnets can pass over a bed of magnetocaloric material. As the field moves across, it triggers heating and cooling in a rhythm. Add a fluid, usually water, to carry that heat away, and now you've got a system that can keep things cold without ever using gas. 
It's quieter, cleaner, and potentially much more efficient. What's even more interesting is that this process doesn't need huge magnets or exotic setups. With smart design, it can be compact, repeatable, ready for scaling, and researchers are already putting these ideas into motion. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The Ames Lab Breakthrough In the heart of Iowa, a team at Ames National Laboratory has been quietly building something remarkable, a working magnetocaloric heat pump. Led by researcher Julie Slaughter, their goal wasn't just to prove the concept. It was to match, and maybe even beat, the performance of conventional systems. Their design centers on an active magnetic regenerator, or AMR. Think of it as the core of the device. Inside it sits a ring of beds, nine in total, filled with gadolinium particles, packed tightly like ultra-fine coffee grounds. These aren't passive components. They're the very heart of the cooling process. A rotating disk of permanent magnets circles above, passing over each bed in turn. As a magnet approaches, the particles in the bed heat up. As it moves away, they cool down. Between these heating and cooling phases, a fluid, water with a corrosion inhibitor, moves through the beds, capturing and transporting the thermal energy. Each bed takes its turn in this dance, magnetized and demagnetized in sequence. The result is a continuous loop of heat exchange, just like a vapor compression cycle, but without the compressors, refrigerants, or noise. After building the prototype using gadolinium, the team began exploring an alloy called La Fisi, made from lanthanum, iron, and silicon. Their simulations showed that switching to this material could significantly increase power density without changing the overall design. That means more cooling, less weight, and potentially lower cost. They're now refining the design, aiming for a cooling capacity of up to one kilowatt, enough to compete with many residential systems. Performance testing is still underway, but the implications are already clear. Solid-state cooling isn't just real, it's catching up fast. It's from lab to market. While researchers in the U.S. fine-tune their prototypes, Companies in Europe are already turning magnetocaloric cooling into real-world products. One of the most visible players is Magnotherm, based in Germany. They've built commercial-grade coolers that use magnetocaloric systems instead of traditional compressors. Their Polaris unit is compact, quiet, and available for a price. At around $7,000, it's not for your kitchen just yet. But it works, and it's being used. A short drive away, another company, Magnoric, is following a similar path. Their prototypes were on display at Chilventa, a major European trade fair for cooling and refrigeration. But instead of just showing schematics or simulations, they offered drinks, literally. Visitors were served cold beverages pulled straight from a working magnetocaloric refrigerator. That kind of demonstration is hard to ignore. Magnoric's goal is bigger than mini fridges. They're targeting supermarkets, hospitals, and data centers, places where reliable cooling is critical and energy use adds up fast. They've already entered a pre-industrial phase for larger systems over 6 kilowatts. Still, both companies know they're early. These machines are expensive, and the technology is still evolving. But what they've proven is this. Magnetocaloric cooling is no longer stuck in the lab. It's functional, marketable, and already carving out a niche in the commercial world. Now the question is, can it scale down to our homes? Or will its future remain in the hands of businesses with bigger needs and deeper pockets? Challenges and comparisons. Magnetocaloric cooling is promising, but it's not without its hurdles. One major challenge is the strength of the magnetic fields required. To get a strong enough magnetocaloric effect, the system often needs fields greater than one Tesla. That's not trivial. It means using powerful permanent magnets, which are not only expensive, but also in high demand for wind turbines, electric vehicles, and electronics. Then there's the issue of scaling. Right now, the units are either large or costly, or both. Reducing the size while keeping performance high is a delicate balancing act. Researchers are confident they'll get there, 
but it won't happen overnight. It's also worth comparing magnetocalorics to its closest rival, elastocalorics. Instead of using magnets, elastocaloric systems cool by applying stress to special alloys. In many ways, they're more efficient and easier to control, but they have their problem, durability. The constant stress wears out materials over time, something magnetocalorics handles better. So while elastocalorics might look better on paper, magnetocalorics may win the long game with longevity and proven reliability. It's less about which is better overall and more about which fits the need in a given application. What comes next? The direction is set. Though the journey is far from over, magnetocaloric cooling systems are steadily making the transition from experimental setups to functional devices, but there's still a steep climb ahead. Cost and technical complexity are the biggest obstacles. Current systems rely on powerful magnets and intricate designs, which drive up both price and size, keeping them out of most homes for now. That's why the next phase of development is so important. Research groups like the one at Ames Lab are pushing the limits of performance while experimenting with more affordable materials like Lafisi. If they succeed, we could see a major leap in both efficiency and affordability. Right now, most of the progress is happening in commercial spaces, restaurants, data centers, and hospitals. But the vision extends far beyond that. As manufacturers figure out how to simplify and miniaturize these systems, it's only a matter of time before magnetic cooling finds its way into everyday homes. No gas, no compressor, no noise, just quiet, reliable, solid-state cooling. It's not just innovation. It's the beginning of a transformation.